So I spent 12 years at Axiom prior to the acquisition and then joined IPG shortly after that. And there's a number of things that Axiom brings to our client base that's very exciting. I think first and foremost, it's the management of their first party data. Clients trust Axiom more than almost any other company in the U.S. to manage their first party data. They have eight out of the top nine credit card issuers for the top five automobile manufacturers. They're taking control of their data for them. They're helping them normalize it and turning it into valuable insights that they use for their performance-based marketing. And enabling all of the IPG clients to have uh, the security, the compliance around that, and access to bring their first party data into action for all their media buying is clearly a, a big uh, opportunity for us as well as for our clients themselves. Second, they've done a really good job in terms of what they call unifying data. So whether it's third party data insights, the emerging second party data ecosystem, or again marrying and enriching the first party data a client has, Axiom builds the technology infrastructure surrounding that to help clients take advantage of all their technology investments, normalize that data to truly get a single customer view so that they can activate those audiences and really know the lifetime value of their client create amazing customer experiences around that. So all of those capabilities are coming to bear within the agency holding company. And of course, Axiom continues to deliver those to their direct clients as well, which number in the hundreds as well. And uh, tell us what you, how you define the identity graph and what Axiom's uh, activation around identity graph is. Yeah, identity graphs are very important, whether you're, of course, some of the world's largest providers of identity services, LiveRamp, which used to be an Axiom company, uh, or somebody like Facebook or Amazon. Identity graphs really help you anchor all of your insights into a normalized set of in, uh, individuals or households or even businesses if you're a B2B marketer, and then activate those consistently. Axiom continues to build some of the world's largest identity graphs on behalf of their clients because every marketing solution that they have is anchored in an identity graph specifically built to clients. We also take that insight and information and use digital identity graphs to connect all of our media performance uh, for our clients. So in IPG Media Brands, identity graphs are critical to enable us to have the greatest media performance, to create private marketplaces for them by attaching our identity graph into a publisher's identity graph. So identity is key to not just Axiom, uh, but IPG Media Brands and our clients directly overall. So what are some of your thoughts, uh, advice, uh, views on the so-called um, people-based marketing, uh, the opportunities for, for brands and for marketers uh, to function with publishers outside the wall gardens by activating data? Yeah, so people-based marketing is a fantastic term that's sometimes conflated with somebody's true capabilities. If you really think about people-based marketing, the most intelligent and some of the largest marketers in the world who have been performance-based for years, those who have grew up in direct marketing, heavy reliance on direct mail, reliance on email, they've always looked at people's, individuals, households, all the attributes around those. They've always closed-looped their campaigns to the conversion data that they hold themselves. Pushing that into the digital world, whether that's through programmatic or walled gardens, is really what they're trying to accomplish. Some of the challenges Walled Gardens have, although they have, quote, people, and you're very confident that there's buyers every day going to Amazon and people on social media, is that the closed loop action of the services they provide are very constrained compared to what a marketer really needs. They need to understand what is the multi-touch attribution and how did every aspect of the engagement impact the actual conversion themselves. And so you're also limiting some of the exposure information from a Walled Garden. So, Taking that uh, people-based marketing and activating it in the open web against programmatic is really the greatest value because you can actually get those insights brought back in to a client's environment and allow them to really get a holistic picture of what's happening there. So people-based marketing should be built off of individuals, mapped to households, households mapped to devices, and then devices up to cookies. It shouldn't always start from cookies and try to map those billions and billions of cookies all the way down into what people uh, might be at the other end of that.